from April 20th, 2019 on Kevin Falk's channel, The MCU Conversation, Episode 3. Marinara sauce on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how this starts. What the fuck? Hell yes! <laughs> like, out of everything. <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh my god, it literally oh. Yes! I heard it. <laughs> Hell yeah! I love that echo. Yes, because Kevin can never just shut off the video before he starts. I know, it's great. I love it. Do you enjoy the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Do you love hearing other people's opinions on the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Then hop onto this guy, Kevin Falk's channel, and watch the MCU Conversation, where he and some guests talk about the movies phase by phase or any kind of conversation on new release like captain marvel for example the conversation is always interesting if you want to watch that podcast go on his channel the link will be in the description down below and now that i got that shameless plug out of the way for kevin folk let the anticipated video begin <laughs> Marinara sauce. <laughs> you had to do it for this one too. Hello <laughs> there, everybody. This is Twenty Two Tiger Dude here, and yes, oh it is God. that time where we are doing our most anticipated movies for summer, two thousand nineteen. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe we're already at the oh. summer movie season. And of course, we do happen to be shoot to shoot this video on Avengers Endgame Day, which is why I am wearing this Captain America mask right here. Ah. Ooh, ooh. Hell yeah. So yeah, uh, this should be a fun video. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's list here. But of course, before we do get to that, I'm going to introduce everyone one by one as I take off this Captain America mask, starting off with Film Fan 0599. Uh, um hey what's up you guys film fan 0599 here again um everyone's favorite meme um i am here to do another anticipated video with my boys kevin the raisin brand kev kaden the penguin and tony the tiger dude um so uh this should be fun and uh yeah uh hey guys it's kevin here very excited to be on uh tony's channel as always um of course, like Tony said, we are doing this on Avengers Endgame Day. Got my Avengers shirt, got the fucking uh, Quantum Realm sweatshirt, got it all. Th that is not a summer movie, unfortunately. We are going to talk summer movies here. Uh, summer movie season in general, it's it's a little light. There's definitely stuff coming out I'm excited for, but not nearly as much as there have been in other years. But definitely stuff that I am interested in talking about. So, uh, again, thank you for having me on, man. Always very, uh, very excited to do this. Of course. And now, Caden. Hello, everyone. It is your boy, Kaden, the motherfucking penguin plant. And I am here, finally, to do our top five anticipated of the summer. And I'm very happy to be here, as always. Thank you for inviting me yet again, Tony. And I'm excited to be here with my boy, Film Fan of 599, and the devil himself, Kevin Falk. And, uh, yeah, 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 I'm very no. happy. I'm very happy to be here. So, yeah. I got the horses in the back. In the back. Horses in the back. <laughs> Let's get to, of course, first, our honorable mentions. So for my honorable mentions, I do have five this time. So that means I have technically a top 10 for this season. So in order, my number 10 would be Good Boys, number nine, Booksmart, number eight, Rocket Man. Number seven, Hobbs and Shaw. And number six, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Hell yeah, so I'm glad to see that one on there. Oof, oof. Um, anyways, so now it is time for uh, the correct honorable mentions. My honorable mentions, of course. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So here we go. I have Long Shot. I have The Intruder for all the wrong reasons. I have um, Rocket Man. I got Dark Phoenix, The Dead Don't Die, Men in Black International, Yesterday, uh, Midsummer, Spider-Man Far From Home. What? What the fuck? 21 Bridges, 
Hobbs and Shaw, and scary stories to tell in the dark. Um, yes, I guess it's on me. Um, now, I'm usually the king when it comes to honorable mentions, but like I said, this summer's kind of light. I do still have a good uh, majority of them, though. So starting off, uh, we do have Long Shot, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, uh, Tolkien, A Dog's Journey, Book Smart, Rocket Man, uh, Late Night, Men in Black International, Shaft, The Dead Don't Die, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, Francisco, Annabelle Comes Home, Stupor, The Farewell, Blind by the Light, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, The Kitchen, Good Boys, and then my 10 through 6. We have at number 10, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. My number 9 is Brightburn. My number 8 is John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. My number 7 is Toy Story 4. And number 6 is The Nightingale. And Caden. All right, boys. It's time for my y'all's armor mentions, okay? Here we go. Ooh. All right, so in no particular order. Okay, so the first one I got is We Always Have Lived in the Castle. Then, I got to say, when I first saw the trailer for this, I think it looked good, but after I'm seeing it again and again, I'm sort, I'm kind of beginning to dig it, and that's The Lion King. I'm actually kind of excited for it now. So, yeah, that's a cool thing. Then you got Pokemon Detective Pikachu, which um, looks fucking great. Uh, then you got Brightburn, which I'm very excited for. Uh, then you got this uh, uh, film called uh, Loose, which I hope to see very soon. And then you got a film called The Sound of Silence, which sounds very eerie. And then these two, the last two, um, are basically kind of tied in a way. But I'm not, I don't know, they can kind of go either way, which one I want to see more. Um, but they are Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Rocket Man. Awesome. Okay, boys. And the great words of me, Hulk Smash. Let's get to this list. Oh, yes. My number five is The Lion King. Like, yeah. how can I not get excited for this? This movie's coming out five days or six days after my birthday, so I'll be 25 by then. But it's just crazy to think that I was in my mom's belly when she and my dad went to go see the animated film in theaters, and then a couple weeks later, I was born after that. So, you know, The Lion King kind of has a special place in my heart because of that. So the fact that 25 years later, I get to experience this in live action form, um, there's just really something special about it. Now, like a lot of these Disney remakes, do they have to be made per se? No, not really, but it is always fascinating to see how they can tell these stories in live action form, like what they'll keep true, stay true to the original, what maybe they'll change differently, some new material. Um, it's just always exciting to see that, and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing with what J John Favreau does with The Lion King. I thought he did a good job with The Jungle Book. You know, that visually looked very stunning. The Lion King looks just as stunning, if not maybe even more than Jungle Book, in all honesty, because, my goodness, the visual effects in The Lion King just look absolutely terrific. And in that recent trailer, just the way they use uh, Hans Zimmer's music um, was just just so powerful and it gave me utter goosebumps like it just gave me that feeling and I, I definitely hope that's what the movie can deliver you know i hope it stays true to the animated film but also i'm curious to see if there's going to be some maybe different things maybe some certain changes um like with what john favreau did with the jungle book so yeah i honestly can't wait for the lion king the more i think about the movie the more i see the that recent trailer especially just the more excited i get for this movie so that's why the lion king is my number five all righty coming in at my number five is brightburn uh brightburn is a movie that i've always had interest in but the more I keep on seeing more about it, and um, I, I just am really excited about it. It basically takes the concept of what will happen, basically, if Superman fulfilled his original prophecy of taking over Earth. And it just looks really um, awesome, like really creepy. You know, they're taking like kind of a horror direction with it as well. And um, I'm really excited to see where this goes. It looks intense. It looks, um, you know, it looks from the looks of it very dark. I'm very excited about it. I think uh, also having it R-rated um, really benefits it a lot, I feel. And, you know, it looks really great. I really love the uh, the trials a lot, especially that second one that was released. Um, so, uh, yeah, and also, you know, James Gunn producing it, you know, helps a lot as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. This actually looks 
really fantastic, you know, and um, hopefully it's just as great as uh, the trailers make it out to be because, uh, you know, Superman is one of my favorite characters of all time. And to see a concept like this is quite interesting, to say the least. So I'm very excited for it. My number five is uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, for a while, I was really toying between this and uh, Toy Story 4 because of the, the Nightingale I didn't know was coming out in the summer, and now I do. But regardless, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, I mean, I've been excited for another Spider-Man movie pretty much since after Spider-Man Homecoming. Just such a fresh and uh, different take on the character that I just really loved. I really loved what they were able to do there. And coming off the heels of that film, but also coming off the heels of Avengers Endgame, uh, I'm especially excited to see what they do. Of course, I'm not going to spoil that for anyone, but let's just say uh, I'm even more excited for this film uh, considering what they did with uh, Avengers Endgame. There's a lot of places they can go with this story. I think it's going to be a little bit more emotional than Homecoming was. Homecoming was pretty simplistic in terms of its story. I think this one's going to be a little bit more complex. You got Jake Gyllenhaal in there as a Mysterio. Very excited to see what he does. Uh, Nick Fury also being in there. That's going to be interesting as well. And a lot of people are thinking that, you know, essentially this is going to be the film that sets like, what the MCU is going to be uh, post Endgame, which I think is going to be really cool overall. I, I don't really know where this film's going to go. They've, I think they've kept a lot hidden, uh, but overall, I'm very excited. I really am looking forward to seeing more of this character. Spider Man has always been my personal favorite superhero, so I cannot wait to see how they uh, continue to do this character justice. Are you gonna do the intro for me or not? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, now Caden, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Why, we, why is it all silent? <laughs> okay. All right. My number five is Spider Man: Far From Home. Oh shit! Yes. I know it's shocking. Oh my god! Let's go. Okay, so. <laughs> Okay, so I am very excited for this. And after seeing Endgame uh, two times, uh, I, I'm especially excited for this film. I'm very excited to see where the events of that film uh, and how they begin to kind of, I guess, unfold a little bit more in this. And uh, I'm yeah. excited to see Mysterio, you know, Drake Gyllenhaal. I'm very, very excited about that. He is one of my favorite actors. And I'm very excited to see how that unfolds. You know, I've kind of begun to feel like this, but I think that Tom Holland is is the best spider-man and peter parker that we've ever gotten like the thing that i loved about you know like Tom mcguire was he was amazing as you know like you know like the peter parker and stuff like he really really got it well he's still great as spider-man and stuff you know he never really to me kind of like you know like leaped off in that aspect you know the films are always great and then andrew garfield the peter parker stuff was kind of awkward and stuff but as spider-man he was great he was athletic and then tom holland is kind of like the combination of this two but even more charismatic and even more like leap off the screen wise and uh, i I know. It, it, I'm just very excited to see more of him because uh, I think he's fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, at the events of Endgame, which I won't spoil, obviously, I'm very excited to see how some of some of the things that happen towards the end of that end up influencing this. Um, and it also be very interesting. And, uh, you know, like um, Kevin mentioned, you know, this could be even more emotional than uh, uh, Homecoming, which was already an emotional film by itself. And I'm very excited to see what takes place. And I believe, you know, um, most of this film... Uh, hopefully I get it right. I believe it takes place in uh, uh, Venice, or I, I can never say it right. But I, I'm very excited to see how that takes place because I've never seen the MCU take place in like a setting like that before. That's like, you know, like kind of beautiful place. But yeah, I'm just hoping for another fun, uh, you know, like funny and intense and, and frawling uh, Spider-Man film because <clears throat> Homecoming was fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's why For Home is my number five. Hell yeah, boy. Now let's get to our number four. Now, my number four is a movie I'm very excited for, despite the fact that the previous one did admittedly disappoint me, but man, oh man, the trailers have been selling me, so I have to put on the list, John Wick, Chapter 3. 
Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the first film. I think the first film is a ton of fun. Um, and the action sequences, just some of the best work I've seen, like on an action standpoint, it's definitely like some of the best for sure. Um, but like I said, I was honestly rather disappointed with the second one on, uh, you know, when it got to the action sequences, obviously I was into it because of just how incredible they are, you know, from a cinematography standpoint and direction standpoint, but storyline wise, unfortunately it didn't grab me. So yeah, the second one did honestly disappoint me but you know even with that you know with the third film like okay where exactly could they go i still did have some of a curiosity with the third movie and you know some of the images they would slowly you know post online i was like that looks cool but once that first trailer dropped i'm like okay yeah i'm sold i'm excited uh this honestly looks like it could be the best one in this entire trilogy just in all honesty like it really looks like they're going all out with the action sequences here i mean you have keanu reeves riding on a goddamn horse like yes. come on it's awesome and keanu reeves as always as he was in the first and second he's absolutely great as his character there's no one else i could see playing john wick at this point he looks absolutely great i'm very excited to see halle berry also and this film and also see the return of Lawrence Fishburne here as well. There's like so many possibilities of where they could end this chapter in this entire trilogy. And I definitely do hope they go all out. I'm very pumped to uh, just see this movie. Bring me this one already. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint me like the second one did. And yeah, that's my number four. My number four is also John Wick Chapter 3. Um, I'm very... I am really hyped for this movie. Um, I love the first two a lot. The first two are some of my favorite action films of this decade, to be quite honest with you. They're just a ton of fun to watch. I think Keanu Reeves does a really great job as this character. And this seems like it's going to be... It could be the craziest one out of all of them because pretty much this one is John Wick versus the world. And it's going to be quite intense to see. Like... Like, how far could they go with this? Like, honestly, like, the second one, you know, got pretty far with some things, but now it just makes me curious, like, what are they going to do with this third movie? And, you know, like you said, he rides on a goddamn horse. Yeah. Um, it, like, I'm excited to see that. Um, Like, it, it just seems, it, it seems like it's going to be brutal, ballistic, and it seems like it's going to be... The, I, I hope this stays as a trilogy because this seems like it could be a fitting last hoorah. So I hope this is – I really hope that this is the last one. So, But, um, yeah, it looks really great. I'm really excited to see how they will round out this entire trilogy. So, yeah, my number four is John Wick Chapter 3. All right, so my number four is one that I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, but I really wish was getting more attention, and that is uh, Danny Boyle's new film, Yesterday. Now, I have been excited for this film pretty much since it was announced that Danny Boyle was going to do a musical film. What I love about Danny Boyle is that he tackles so many different genres, and musical is not really one that he has attacked yet. So I was really excited to see what he was going to do there. Then they dropped that trailer, and you know I knew what the movie was called, and it got me even more excited because the premise behind this movie I think is one of the most creative in a while. I mean, you have this guy, and you know he's the struggling musician, and you know he can't really seem to make a career of it. He's trying the best he can, and then all of a sudden this power outage happens, and he's the only one. Uh, that remembers the Beatles. Everyone else, they're basically just faded out of existence. So now he has this choice, like, you know, what do I do with this? Do I try to, you know, see, do, do I try to make a profit out of this? I think it's just a really cool concept overall. There's a lot you can really do with that. Hymish Patel looks like he's going to do some really great work here. Of course, you have like Lily James and Kate McKinnon. All of them are really great. But just the premise surrounding it uh, just really does intrigue me. And considering you have someone like Danny Boyle, one of the finest directors working today, um, I think definitely you could get something really creative out of this for sure. Um, I think definitely this has potential to be one of his most different films for sure. There's a lot of things that it seems like they're keeping hidden, and I'm like very excited to see how this film uh, does for now overall. It looks so... <clears throat> It looks so entertaining. It looks so creative. And it looks really funny as well. The line with Ed Sheeran at the end always gets me. And uh, just in general, I am very excited to see how this one turns out. So my number four is absolutely yesterday. All right, everyone. My number four is The Farewell. All right. So this film I've been wanting to see for a very, very long time because it's been getting incredible buzz 
from lots of film festivals and it is playing here in Boston uh, in a few days, I believe. And I'm going to try to go. Uh, so I know this film, uh, not many know what it is basically about, but it's basically just kind of read the basic plot, I guess. Basically it's kind of about um, this, like, you know, it's like kind of like family and you know, there are different like elements of the family and how they all come together because of this, you know, these kind of like, you know, like illnesses and stuff. And like they all, it's, it's kind of in a way, kind of like Tokyo story uh, in a way where the college got a bigger because someone has like an illness basically and stuff. And, um, and there's like a wedding involved and it's like impromptu and stuff. And it's, uh, I've just, that's what I was saying. I've just heard amazing, amazing things about this film. Uh, I've been wanting to see it for a very long time. I've been hearing that it's like in like an emotional, like gut punch and it just, it, it's getting a very, very good uh, reception, and I'm just very, very, very excited to see it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got an awards contender on our hands, I think. So, uh, yeah. Nice. Now let's get to our number three. So, my number three is Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yep, it's Spider-Man Far From Home, um, and I agree with what Kevin and Caden said earlier about this movie, about how it definitely looks like it could be more emotional and even more intense than Homecoming, in all honesty, and I loved Homecoming. Uh, that was a movie I thought was going to really like, but I actually ended up uh, loving that movie, and it was because of the emotion that was really brought to that movie, and Michael Keaton as the villain, oh my god. Uh, so yeah, and especially considering where Endgame is, and I have not seen Endgame as I'm filming this, but I am seeing it tomorrow, which is Saturday the 27th, I can't wait, needs to hurry up, but yeah, back to here, I can't wait to see how, um, you know, we see the aftermath um, for what happens in Endgame. I can't wait to see Nick Fury in here, too. It's going to be cool to see Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. I mean, this is like the year of, like, Nick Fury, basically. So it's really interesting to see that. And Jake Gyllenhaal, too. It's really cool. And it's interesting how Caden brought up Tobey Maguire earlier because I believe um, Jake Gyllenhaal, didn't he audition for the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies? I think I heard something about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like the fact that he's finally in the Spider-Man movie, just not as Spider-Man, but as Mysterio. It's really cool to see. So an actor, you know, that talented, um, being in the MCU is very exciting. And um, yeah, um, don't know too much about this so far, which is really good. I want to know as minimal details as possible. I just hope it can absolutely deliver. So yeah, I honestly cannot wait for this movie. And I honestly get... A little more excited just thinking about it. So, yeah, that is my number three. Go Spider-Man. Boom. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, thank you all for supporting my movie. Anyways. All yeah, right. It's not in your top five. Well, I'm sorry. All right. Number three. Is, uh, number three for me is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um yeah, boy. I'm very, very excited about this movie. Um, This movie has one of the biggest casts I think I've ever seen for a film, to be quite honest. Um, but to list off just the main ones, you know, you got Brad Pitt, you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you got Margot Robbie, you know, Al Pacino's in this, like, there's a lot of names attached to this movie, and, you know, at the, at the helm of all of it is, you know, Quinn Tarantino, who I think is a really great director, he's definitely one of my favorites, and, you know, he's made a lot of really fantastic movies, and from, from just the looks of that teaser trailer, which um, one of the best teaser trailers I've seen in quite some time, to be honest. I just, it just the, the look of it, the um, just the feel. Just I'm already loving everything about this. I haven't even seen the movie yet, and just from the looks of it, we, we might have another hit from uh, Tarantino on our hands. And I'm really excited to see what the what he uh, does does with this. So uh, yeah, my number three is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Hollywood or Hollywood. <laughs> I, I, I understood that reference. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. So my number three um, is, uh, you know, I think this is probably going to be very high on a lot of people's list, and it is on mine as well. And I think out of all of the big, like, blockbusters coming out this summer, this to me looks like the blockbuster um, of – this looks like the summer blockbuster uh, to see. And that, of course, is Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, I'll just say right off the bat – 
I am really not a fan of the previous installments um, of this series. I love the first like 20 to 30 minutes of Brian Cranston. I think that stuff is fantastic. But once he's gone, I think the film gets rather boring and just slow and I just don't really care. I did appreciate, you know, the stuff with Godzilla and things like that. I thought all that looked really good. But just in general, it's a film I don't really think that much of. This, on the other hand, um, seems like they are really um, using Godzilla to his fullest potential. And I'm very excited to see what they do with that. Just the whole concept of essentially that, you know, there are all these monsters running amok and they kind of need to use Godzilla um, as an asset to help, you know, uh, fight all these monsters, I think is a really cool idea, but they're still not sure if he's necessarily on their side or not. Uh, I'll just say it right now. I mean, I know I haven't seen the movie yet, but this easily already is some of the best cinematography of the entire year. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. You could literally just take a, you could literally just pause it at any frame in the trailer and it is just a marvel to behold. I mean, absolutely incredible. And I love um what I'm seeing in this trailer for sure. The cast here is just fucking nuts. I mean, you have Vera Farmiga, uh, Kyle Chandler, Millie Bobby Brown, Bradley Whitford, um, Double Nines girl Sally Hawkins. I mean, so many talented uh, actors in this movie, and that gets me hyped. But then, of course, factoring in the whole concept and things like that, the visual effects. Also, I got to see a five-minute preview of this before Avengers Endgame, and... Oh, oh, I cannot get here fast enough. Honestly, the more and more I think about this movie, uh, the more I just get hyped for it. I cannot wait to see how this film turns out. I think it has so much potential. And I am really, really hoping that it can finally be a film that I like in this monsterverse they're trying to set up. Because the other ones really haven't impressed me at all. Like I said, I don't like Godzilla and I really don't like Constable Island. So hopefully this can finally be a th what the film in this series that actually does uh impress me because so far not doing it but uh yeah hype for this one all right my number three is also godzilla king of the monsters ah! 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 <laughs> I, 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 I was tight i was trying to do the godzilla fire breathing i know I, you I, were but I, but, I, but I fucked that up so i <laughs> you fucked that up so bad that? <laughs> anyways like i was trying to go ahead Tony, you, never uh, to, uh, amuse me. you never cease modern freak let's got looking the monsters and I'm very excited for this. So, also, like, Kevin, I also saw the five-minute preview in front of Endgame and IMAX. And Ooh. I gotta say, I've seen every trailer now, because I just saw the new one when I just saw Endgame again. And I gotta say, I've seen every trailer now. And I gotta say, I love how fucking artsy this looks. Like, first of all, like, it's like, it looks like, it looks fucking insane. Like, uh, you know, set piece wise, uh, but like conceptually and stuff. And like, I'm not saying if it wasn't like artsy, like, like, like the way it looks like it's kind of being like done a little bit, like it wouldn't be good, but it's like the way it's done and like the music they're using and like the sophistication, they're like the extra sophistication they're kind of giving to this property and like the, uh, the massive respect they're giving to Godzilla as like the ultimate like king of monsters and just absolutely like breathtaking. And my gosh, like the cinematography, like the blues and like, kind of like the brownish yellows and just like oh it just it all looks fucking gorgeous um and yeah i'm i'm very very excited for this uh i love I, I love monster films like this and this one just looks like it's sticking up to a level that we have not seen in a very long time um and i loved the godzilla from 2014 but you know i gotta be honest you know it's been a while i want to see some godzilla shit and I want to see all the other monsters, like, you know, like Mafra and all the other ones. It just, I'm just very, very excited for this. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. It's going to be big, loud, and, uh, yeah, that's why I asked my number three. Now, we're going to get into our number two. So, my number two is going to be Toy Story 4. Ah. <laughs> Kevin Hanal Park once again with my number one guesses. Um, no, uh, <clears throat> this was honestly really close, but uh, I, I was honestly debating really hard between this and what my actual number one is, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I, I was struggling, but like still, even with me looking forward to my number one just a tiny bit more, um, I'm still completely, completely 
um, over the moon excited for Toy Story 4. I do uh, love all three of the Toy Story movies. Um, they're not just like some of Pixar's best accomplishments in animation. It's just like some of the best um, animated movies I've seen just ever, in all honesty. Uh, I think it is really is such an achievement. I really can't wait to see where they're going to take Toy Story 4. And even if it's not as good as the other three, which I'm not expecting it to, to be honest, I still hope it's a very satisfying uh, conclusion to what we can now call, instead of a trilogy, a quadrilogy. Um, so that's going to be very interesting. Animation, as always, I don't even throw the say it's Pixar, but it looks absolutely incredible. It's going to be awesome to see Bo Peep return because last time we saw Bo Peep was Toy Story 2. Uh, that movie is actually 20 years old uh, uh, this year. So technically, we haven't seen Bo Peep in 20 years. So it's going to be cool to see her back. Um, and then Forky 2 voiced, uh, for what I see so far, wonderfully by Tony Hale. Tony Hale looks like he's going to do a terrific job as uh, Forky. I'm already really liking the character just based on the trailer. And... Um, yeah, I just hope that this is another uh, really entertaining, uh, another really funny, but also as expected with these Toy Story movies, just a lot of emotion. And, you know, we've heard stories about how the ending actually made Tom Hanks and Tim Allen cry and all that. So hearing all that makes me mentally not ready to see what that ending is going to be. But however they ended, I just hope they just go out with a bang. I truly can't wait to see this movie. Words can't describe my excitement, and that's why it is my number two. All righty. My number two is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Um, I actually really love the 2014 Godzilla film. Um, I think that's probably, well, honestly, like one of the most underrated movies out there. I actually really thought that was a great monster film and a really great setup to where they could go with this monster universe. And I actually really enjoyed Kong Skull Island as well. So with Godzilla King of the Monsters, this looks, honestly, this looks more insane than both of those movies just by the looks of these trailers. And my God, how this movie looks, man, I know Kevin and Kate had already talked about it, but it just the look of this movie is just already absolutely beautiful. I love the how the cinematography looks. I love the color scheme a lot, too, with this. I think it just looks absolutely beautiful. And now that the government has to use Godzilla as an ally for the, for the other monsters that are, that are coming down, but, you know, still not wondering, you know, wondering if they still can trust them or not, is going to be quite interesting to see as well. And, you know, man, I cannot wait to be sitting in the theater and seeing monsters fuck each other up, okay? I am really excited to see that, and um, it, it's going to be quite exciting. Um, it looks absolutely insane. Um, like Kevin said, out of all of, like, the blockbuster-type movies that are coming out this year for the summer, I do think this is kind of going to be the most epic one out of all of them, to be honest, because it just, just this screams summer blockbuster. I'm, like, really really excited about this. I hope this is the one that turns around people with this monster universe. So yeah, my number two is Godzilla King of the Monsters. My number two, uh, this one should not come as a surprise to a lot of people. My number two is absolutely Midsummer. Now I'll just say it right now. Um, in terms of horror, this year is insane. There are so many uh, various horror films coming out this year that I'm very hyped for. But Midsummer is very high on that list. And how can it not be? I mean, Hereditary, uh, Ari Aster just coming out of nowhere with that film. A director that I really did not know any, you know, he really hadn't made uh, any feature films yet. And then he comes out with that. And uh, it's easily my favorite horror film of this decade, no question. And you know, asking him to follow up any film with that, yeah, it definitely is going to be a challenge. And I'm not expecting Midsummer to top Hereditary at all. I just want a really great horror film from him, and I think that's what he's going to give us here. What I really love about this trailer is just how different it looks from Hereditary. There is a very stark contrast here, where Hereditary was more of a family drama. This seems much more like, say, a psychological film, you know, about this cult and all this weird shit that's going on there and this couple that like happens upon them and whether or not they get involved and all the rituals and things like that, that they do. Um, this film looks like it's going to be way creepier and it has this just 
very just uh, just grotesque vibe to it. And I'm very excited to see how that all turns out. The white letter box as well, uh, I love. I love all the weird things A24 has been doing with aspect ratios lately. And this is definitely one of the most unique for sure. And it looks like it's really going to add to this film. Just in general, we don't know a ton about it, obviously. But really, I don't want to know a ton. I mean, uh, the cast here as well, Florence Pugh, um, Jack Rayner, of course, uh, Will Poulter, just a really great cast overall. Uh, just the more I think about this movie, the more I really am hyped for it. This is, uh, I, I'm hoping that this is another really great film from Ari Aster. I think we can definitely see a potential horror master on the rise for sure. So for all those reasons and more, Midsummer is absolutely my <clears throat> number two. All right, boys. This was the one that I was telling y'all earlier when we weren't uh, filming that y'all might be surprised just how high this is. Yeah. This actually... Once it comes out, could be my number one. But for now, it's number two. Number two is Toy Story 4. Oh, shit! Let's go! I actually had a feeling this was going to be on your list. This film looks fucking amazing. And I'm in, like, a weird minority with it because everyone I've talked to, except for, like, a few... Uh, have been like, yeah, it looks good, but I'm like, like I've seen the show multiple times. I'm like, this looks fucking fantastic. And like, first of all, the Forky stuff I think is absolutely hilarious. Like, I love how like in Tooney is with like his own like reality, but he really yeah. isn't at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, and then it's just, it's just, uh, it's just so good to see you know, like Woody Buzz. Um, you know, everyone, you know, back and stuff, you know, I could go over the whole, you know, list and stuff, but like, it's just good to see like all, all basically everyone back. But the thing that I love with the trailer is that you know it, it kind of hit me when like they kind of made the pitch of the film like okay well we finished like andy's journey but you know it kind of all goes back to like woody because it all began with him and andy so you got to kind of finish up woody in a way and the thing that i like about this is because it looks like it's really really going to get into you know like you know woody and you know like what like you know like what it's going to kind of make him you know like tick and for that you know it's kind of like you know like andy and bo peep because you know bo peep you know like he you know like he loves her and stuff and to see Bo Peep be so different than what she's been before to now being this and that, you know, she's kind of like living her own life and not being like, you know, like a toy for like a child and Woody, you know, he's like kind of like torn on what to do. It's like, you know, be like his, you know, friends or family or kind of, be, you know, like his love. And it, it's going to be, it's, it's interesting. Like, I feel like people aren't looking at it in that way. This is, and I'm not saying people don't get it, but it's like, I want people to kind of look at it more in that way. And just like, you know, I'm not saying it's most complexity ever, but I like how they're they're trying to make it very very like um, I, I guess I'm really kind of like methodical and kind of like it's gonna kind of go deep into like you know like uh, you know like Woody and what he like you know he truly cares and loves for yeah. and uh, you know it's there's gonna be lots of humor in there too and the whole gang trying to find him which is like, we've seen that before but the thing that I've always said to people who have complained the Toy Story movies are technically the same thing is that they do things very differently each one that keep making it creative and exciting and refreshing and just a, a, a gut punch. And I feel like this film is going to be gut-punch. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to lie. When I first saw this film, I, 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 I saw this trailer in front of Dumbo and IMAX, and I cried during it. I don't know why, what it is, but just, like, it looks like it has the heart still. And I was very on the fence of this film because I was like, okay, look. I mean, you know, maybe it could work. But seeing it now, I actually love the idea of this film. And I think it actually, you know, can work. Because I, I, I like the short films they're making. But th- this is what I think they, they, they should have... Uh, I'm, I'm happy they've been working on this for a long time. And they've been taking their time with it. Like, this was supposed to come out, like, in what, like, 20, like, 17 or something? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like originally yeah. that, then 18, yeah. and then 19. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy they've been taking their time with it. It looks like they put a lot of care into it. My God, the animation. It's just... Oh, yeah. It is, it's absolutely insane to look at the first Toy Story. Now this one. It's crazy. Um, yeah. The amount of detail and the precision. Oh, just beautiful. And... I, I don't know. I'm just extremely excited for this. Like this, out of like, um, honestly, like this honestly could be my number one. Uh, it's not, but uh, you know, it could be once it comes out because I've said this before. Like, uh, when the most like, I guess we'll go to like uh, Endgame specifically for last um, years. I um, mean, for the last uh, list, it wasn't even my top five, I believe, or it was like number four or something. I don't even know. I, but, like, I remember you said it was like your number six at that time. It was yeah, that, 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 yeah, that that should have been like number freaking two or one. Uh, so like because like once it like it was, it was coming around, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, this it could be the same way, but we'll have to see. But I mean, I'm extremely excited for this, and you know, like while like it's not, it's kind of different with like Endgame because like I literally literally grew up with the MCU from 2008 with Iron Man. 
But for mm. this, I, I, I've I grown up with Toy Story even younger, but I'm not as into it, like, as, like, a Double Nine, who's, like, the most into it as anyone I've ever known. But, like, you know, it's just, like, you know, it's still, like, it's kind of, like, a, a, pe- a little piece of, like, my childhood in a way, because um, I, I remember, like, when I was really, really young that, like, I would watch, like, the first two stories a lot with, like, my, my dad and my, <laughs> uh, my, my, my older brother and... Uh, we would kind of like bond over it in a way, and I used to have all like you know like the toys and stuff, and like the merchandise, and you know, you know, while you know, I, I you know, it just it was it's kind of like it's gonna be hard to say goodbye again, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it is. So I mean, yeah, but I, I'm extremely excited. Um, I, I'm probably gonna cry if I cry during the trailer. So I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, that's that. I'm extremely excited for this. I think this looks fucking fantastic, and um, I can't wait to see it. So yeah. Yeah, I just like to make a quick comment. When I saw the trailer before Dumbo, I'm not gonna lie, I got kind of choked up looking at that chair in the big screen. To be I honest. know it's it's so overwhelming. Like, no, yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. And now, boys, I can't believe it. We're at our number one already. Wow. Damn. Let's do this. Oh my god. Hell yeah. So, my number one most anticipated movie of the summer is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I called it! Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job, Phil Fan. Uh, yes. Here's a cookie. Yeah. Yes, boy. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, Film Fan. What you said earlier about how the teaser is one of the best teasers ever, I completely agree. That is one of the best teasers I've seen in a long time i was i was already excited for the movie as it is but that teaser just raised um my my excitement level like it really amped that up for me um obviously you know we have a great cast a large cast here um you know from brad pitt to leonardo dicaprio to margot robbie to al pacino to kurt russell to james marsden you know the list goes on and on and on and i just can't wait you know Ter- uh, quentin tarantino it's definitely one of the most talented directors and writers just out there. I love how the man writes his screenplays. And I know people have commented before how he kind of writes his screenplays as if you're watching a play, which is which is a cool way of describing it, honestly. It just brings that nice, unique sense to the director. And yeah, I just can't wait to see... Um, you know, how he's going to uh, portray Hollywood, especially in that teaser where we see that actor that pro- portrays Bruce Lee for like a good 10 seconds. Like, oh, my God, like uh, that actor. I don't know what his name is at the moment, but man, he already looks like he's nailing Bruce Lee. And, you know, however else he's going to explore Hollywood, I can't wait to see it. And of course, the big thing, um, the one I know um, most seem to be a little iffy about and for good reason is how he's going to handle the manson murders like that's maybe the one thing i'm slightly iffy about you know hopefully he handles that one carefully but definitely aside from that minor minor you know worry i am like excited for this film i love the look i love the style cinematography is gorgeous Direction is always from Tarantino. Looks like it's going to be terrific. And yeah, like I said, I, I'm excited for this movie. I really cannot wait to see it. Definitely looks like it's going to be one of the most entertaining movies of the entire summer. And that is why Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is my number one most anticipated movie of the summer. Film fan. Uh, my number one is Toy Story 4. I don't even need to do a build up because I, fi- I figure everyone knows what the number one is for me. But anyways, um... Toy Story 4, like Caden mentioned beforehand, these movies mean a lot to me. Uh, the first movie, uh, pretty much, well, you could say all three of them, but the first one is my favorite movie of all time. It's pretty much been with me since I've been born, to be completely honest with you. Um, I've seen this movie so many times. I love these characters to death. Um, I, I just love this whole universe of Toy Story. And, um, I mean, the second movie barely came out only a few months after I was born. Just, it, it feels like these movies have been with me for just pretty much my whole life. And I love them so, so much. And the fact that I'm going to be 20 by the time this movie comes out is a really crazy concept to me. And, like, it really makes me emotional thinking about that, to be honest. Because, like, 
you know, it, it just, these movies have been with me my entire life. And, you know, I'm seeing this newest one as um, going into, you know, my 20s. And it's really a weird concept for me to think. And, you know, it, it's really great. And I'm really excited to see this because, th and honestly, this looks really great, honestly. Like, I'm not just saying it because it's, you know, Toy Story, but I honestly do think this looks like a really great, and this could be a really great installment. Um, that trailer, um, uh, like one of the most like heartwarming and heart wrenching things I've seen in quite some time, to be honest. Like I don't know if anybody seen my trailer reaction, but I was damn near almost in tears while watching it because oh, just, oh I, I saw that trailer reaction. Not to interrupt you, but I yeah, I, I, like I was just I was damn near almost in tears. Like I just I'm I just can't wait to see these characters again. And like you know, Caden said, this focusing more on Woody this time around, and you know like. Um, focusing on him, it looks really great, and you know, um, I'm really enjoying, you know, the stuff I'm seeing with Forky. He looks really funny. Um, just this movie looks really fantastic, honestly. Like, I honestly do think this could be um, a really great installment into this series, and you know, I'm really excited to see it. You know, I usually don't see movies the Thursday night of them, but for this, I really need to because for obvious reasonings, and um, I'm just really excited for this. Um, I, I call 2019 the year where the most anticipated movies of my life will emotionally break me, and yeah. uh, this is definitely, <laughs> this is definitely going to be one of them. So, uh, yeah, easily without question, uh, Toy Story 4 is my most anticipated movie of the summer and of the whole year. No, honestly, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, before we get to me, I think you've hit the nail on the head there because, like, um, in the in the spring, you had Avengers Endgame, and this is Toy Story 4, and then I'm assuming in, and when we get to uh, September, it'll be Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, all, right. all right, Kevin, so I'm going to guess your number one's Aladdin. Uh, yeah. Woo don't get me started. Um, <laughs> That, I mean, it, it is in a video. It is on a list, just just, just not this one. But um, anyway, so despite my um, initial, you know, despite how wrong I was with Tony's number one, you might have seen that I was very excited that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was his number one. And that's because it's also mine. Uh, absolutely. Ooh. Not only is it my number one, it's my number one of the entire year as well, I should say. Uh, just everything about this film, I have been so hyped for. Um, just knowing Quentin Tarantino has a new film out, I mean, that immediately has me hyped. I think he's one of the best out there right now. It's literally, I mean, he's probably my second favorite director of all time. It's literally between him and Scorsese for me. Um, but anytime he gets his hands on something, I am all for it. And like Tony said, I mean, the man just has a knack for screenwriting and it's something that a lot of directors just simply can't replicate. Uh, he knows how to do dialogue, you know, it just so many iconic things when it comes to him. You know when you're watching a Tarantino movie. And what I love about this film is it seems like it's taking everything that Tarantino loves and just putting it and wrapping it all into a nice little bow. And I, that's what I really do love about it. I mean, the 60s setting um, is one that I personally love. I think it's like the most fascinating time period in history. There's so much interesting stuff that went down then, and there's so much there that he can cover. But I love that he's focusing on the Hollywood scene because Hollywood at the time, yeah, it was a very different type of industry. You know, pictures were getting a lot more um, risk, risque and a lot of the innocence was starting to fade away. And I really love the way he's telling that story. The whole thing with uh, it, this being about a um, actor and his stunt double, there's a lot you can do there for sure. I'm very excited to see how that goes down. As far as the Manson stuff, I know a lot of people are worried. I'm really not. There's a little film called Inglorious Bastards, and a lot of that is revisionist history. I feel like Tarantino is probably going to do something similar here. Um, you know, sure, Charles Manson is a character in the film, as is Sharon Tate, uh, but we'll have to see really what he does do here. Um, but besides that, you also have such an incredible cast here. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, Bruce Stern, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, just such an incredible cast. So all of that combined with, you know, Tarantino's script, combined with, of course, Leonardo DiCaprio being my favorite actor working today. Um, there's just so much writing on this film and uh, so much that just gets me so hyped for it. That teaser in general, if that's the only trailer they would release, I know they're going to release another trailer, but if that was hypothetically the only trailer they released, I would be fulfilled because it told me everything that I really do need to know about this movie. Honestly, the more we get closer to this film, the more I am just absolutely anticipating it. Tarantino is a mastermind, and I just cannot wait to see what he has, um, he, what he has in store for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Absolutely, my number one. Like I said, not just of the summer, but of the entire year overall. 
And now, Caden, what is your number one? All right, boys. My number one is a film that I've been waiting for years to come out. I mean, I'm like, I can't even describe it. I have wanted to see this film for a very, very long time. Just like Toy Story 4, but this one I want to see maybe a little bit more. Um, I can't believe it's finally coming out. And that is Ugly Dolls. Oh my god. Yes. I'm so excited for Ugly Dolls. It looks absolutely amazing. All right, so. Don't, my don't, number... don't, don't, don't play my emotions, boy. Fuck you. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, so my number one is The Nightingale. No one should be probably surprised by this, knowing me. Yeah. And no, this is not an adaptation of the Julie Cruz song from Twin Peaks. It's actually the new Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Kent film. Um, now, <laughs> funny story. This literally just screened a few hours ago uh, in Boston near me, but I couldn't go. I'm a little bit still upset with that, but it's okay because it's coming August 2nd. Now, in case y'all don't know exactly what this movie is, it's a new Jennifer Kent film who directed one of the greatest horror films ever made, The Babadook. And I don't care anyone says the film is a masterpiece. And fuck anyone who disagrees. Anyways, um, I'm joking. But, um, <laughs> but yes, um, The Babadook is one of the scariest films ever made. It is, like I said, a masterpiece. I absolutely adore it. Uh, I think it is one of the most brutal depictions of grief I've like ever seen. And just trauma. And just, it was just so haunting. And in this film... I know it's going to be different, but just, just the way things I've heard about it, and just it sounds very different, and it sounds a bit more like risque for Jennifer Kent, who's a fabulous director. I love her. And just, you know, I'm just hoping that the atmosphere is there again for the film, and just, you know, the vibe and, like, the tension. I hope it's all there, because if it is, it's going to be just, oh, my God. Because uh, y'all know what this film's about. Basically, it takes place in, I believe, 1821, and it's about, like, a girl, and she's basically hunting after this guy who did something to her family. So... It's basing it off again of kind of like the trauma and something like, you know, grief that trying to like avenge that. And like in the Babadoo, not to spoil it, but it's kind of like getting into that. And to this, it's also kind of, it's, it's, got, it's kind of giving me the same way. I'm kind of giving into like, you know, like, like, like the revenge aspect of kind of like, you know, like what you're kind of, kind of going through, which is interesting. And the thing I like about it is the way I've been hearing about it, it's kind of different for uh, Jennifer Kent and the way that she's done in the past. And it, that's great to hear because I like to see directors challenge themselves. And I'm just, I'm just very, I'm extremely excited for this. This has been one of my most, this is one of my most, just top five most anticipated films of the year. Um, I believe I actually had it as like number two or three on last year's list, or I might have been, I'm not sure, because uh, I wasn't sure at the time when it was coming out because it wasn't announced. But I'll, but anyways, it's coming out now. I'm very excited for it, and that is why the Nightingale uh, is my number one. Woo! Woo! All right. All right, hold on, give me one second. Oh my God, Tony. Oh my God! <sighs> What's happening? All right, you guys. So that was our top five anticipated oh movies God. for summer 2019. Uh, be sure to comment down below. What are your top five anticipated movies for summer 2019? And stay tuned because we will be doing the top five least. Anticipated movies for summer 2019. We will be uh, shooting that on May the 3rd as far as when it's going to go up on my channel. I'm not sure, but we will shoot that on Friday, May 3rd. Looking forward to seeing everyone's list here. And, of course, before we do say goodbye, uh, close out the video, I will go to everyone one by one, starting off with Film Fan. Where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Film Fan 0599. And, uh, yeah. Um, thank you once again to my boy Tony Estrada, Twenty Two Tiger Dude, for having me on for his anticipated video. Um, oh, smash! Hell, 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 yes! And um, yeah. yeah, of course, you guys can find me over on my YouTube channel. As usual, you guys can check me out over there. Always do enjoy being on this channel. This was a lot of fun to do for sure. I always look forward to doing these uh, anticipated videos. And uh, yeah. Um, least anticipated is going to be fun let's just say there's a lot more i'm not looking forward to this summer than am looking forward to so we'll get into we'll cross that bridge once we get there but uh either way this was fun and uh yeah also tony um you are not iron man that is that is mr penguin over here all right uh mr penguin where can they find you all right y'all I'm mainly active, like, social media-wise on Facebook, but I ain't giving y'all my profiles. So fuck y'all. Uh, so y'all can find me. Wow. <laughs> so y'all y'all can Piece find me shit. mostly on Letterboxd. Like I said, I do plan at some point to come back to YouTube, but I'm not going to give it a date 
hopefully soon, but still, I guess uh, Tony can link my channel down below and stuff. Who knows? I'll come yeah, back. I will. I can come back tomorrow. Who knows? I'll come back whenever I'm ready, but mostly I'm on Letterboxd, which uh, will probably be down there below. I like to write a lot and post my thoughts on stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Thank you for having me on once again. I really had a good time. And uh, fuck you, Kevin. Also, I'm Iron Man, so fuck you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, with all that said, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And uh, everyone that's seen Avengers Endgame, I hope you all are enjoying the movie. You know, a very fun, very fun day to be shooting this uh, video for sure. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, this is 20 Tiger Dude here with film fan Kevin Folk and uh, Caden or Aubrey <coughs> Wanderer. And oh, yeah, and of course, just like what I said earlier in the beginning of this video, if you want to check out Kevin Falk's MCU Conversation podcast, the link will be in the description down below. But we hope you enjoyed this uh, this podcast, of course. I have had such a great time getting to do it. And uh, till next time, Excelsior! And don't forget that all of us will always have... Tiger power. Fuck that pussy. Excelsior. Ex that's that is no. You, you're stealing. Mm. What?